Hello Zero K fans and welcome to another exhibition match. This time we're going to be watching Norm 616 versus Steel Blue once again, this time on Planet... Sorry, Battle for Planet 17. I am Shadow Fury 333 your host, and let's get started. So we saw Battle for Planet 17 last week when I casted, and it's fair, it hasn't changed at all since. Not that it would, but basically same idea. You have a lot of small ridges that bots are great at pathing around, vehicles are not, so both players are going for shield bots, which on this map is kind of nice. They are very good in defensive clumps, and oftentimes players will end up clumping around this hill here, the center of the map, and will basically use that as a staging point to attack their opponent's base. Both players starting out in the most common place to start out, the three metal expansion slot, or three metal slot expansion. The previous game we saw, one of the players did start out closer to the center, but starting out here gives you metal spots very easily available and also puts you on high ground. So wind generators, as you can see, are generating a little over two energy per second, which compared to the cost of solar collectors, being that wind generators are half the cost, this is very cost effective. Though wind generators are still, as you can see, kind of volatile, so their maximum speed is definitely higher. The minimum speed is also slightly higher by being in high ground, but it's just worth noting. Anyway, small battle starting out. A couple bandits between both players are seeing each other. Norm is putting a lot more directed effort into going directly towards Steel Blue. Steel Blue is moving his bandits around to scout out. He actually hasn't found Norm's base yet, but he was sending his bandits, spreading them out, just to see what's going on, whereas Norm seems to be sweeping from east to west, and will be finding the base very quickly, seeing as Steel Blue's base is right in the center. Steel Blue continues to expand within his base while Norm does the same. Though Norm focusing entirely on solar collectors, so Steel Blue right now actually has... Well, he's, he's parity for energy, but he can... Well, he could have an energy advantage, actually. Ah, I see what it is. He's... Well, once we see his commander, it's easier to ship. No, both players have the... Sport Commander, however, there we go. Energy Cell for Norm 616, where Steel Blue has not got an Energy Cell. That's the difference. So Steel Blue is able to get, well, he was able to get Energy Parity without upgrading to his commander, whereas Norm has upgraded his commander, which means that Norm's resources have been dumped into that, while Steel Blue is a bit more able to get units up. At this point, though, he's going to need that. He's losing one of his Metal Extractors. Norm is doing a much better job of raiding than Steel Blue is. This bandit will be going down to the commander, but and the second one going down to a roach, but still, that is pretty big. At this point, Steel Blue getting some reclaim off that, so it's not completely out, but definitely is being held back a bit. At this point, Norman Steel Blue still about parity for economy. Roach getting rid of a couple bandits, nothing huge at this point, just still kind of keeping parity. Neither player has managed to get the upper hand, though Thug's coming up quickly for Steel Blue. On the other hand, Norm continuing to go straight for Bandits. He does have some Outlaws planned out for later, but right now, just Bandits. And other than that, his economy is quite stable. He's also got some defense stores around just in case raiders come, but Steel Blue has not done any raiding. This is actually rather unwise. In 0k, these Bandits should be raiding. These two bandits here, they should be raiding. The game of 0k is largely determined by raiding, especially in the early parts of the game. Even in the later parts of the game, sweeping some units around to take out metal extractors can really tear apart your opponent's economy when they least expect it. However, Norm is the only one taking that lesson to heart. He is doing a pretty good job getting rid of one of the constructors. The thugs are doing what they can to get rid of the bandits, but unfortunately they're not nearly fast enough. The two bandits here are trying to defend, but getting outnumbered, taking out one of Norm's bandits, but still not quite enough. The thugs unable to hit for anything. However, the ball is getting large. The bandits will have a harder time penetrating that, and actually, quite a few of them are going down to those thugs. Despite the fact that the thugs do not fire that quickly, the bandits simply can't deal any meaningful damage. The shield's taking all of the shots. And that's what you get with recharging shield balls. Shields, that's what they do. And an outlaw coming in to support the thugs, now moving out. Steel Blue We'll be able to take care of these bandits no problem once the outlaw gets near. It'll slow it down enough for the thugs to take it out, but the bandits don't want to have any of that, nor moving them completely out of the way of that ball and going for raiding. Going for the commander as well, and the commander will be able to take them out. They will take out the metal extractor, but they should go around, take out the other ones. One of them getting distracted 
on the Solar co Collector, but that's not going to do it too much. Now back at Norm's base, he is getting outlaws of his own while raiding. The raid is going quite well, though losing one of his bandits to the explosion from the Metal Extractor. A little bit embarrassing, but still, he is slowing down Steel Blue. In fact, Steel Blue's economy only at 10 metal per second, whereas Norm has been expanding quite a bit. 26 metal per second already. I don't believe that's all from Metal Extractors, though. Just double check. He does have... 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8... He has 11 metal extractors, so that's 22 metal out of that. The rest is probably overdrive given his 22 power, so Norm very much ahead in economy. At this point, Steel Blue needs to raid. That's all he really has for, going for him. His expansion attempts have been thwarted at every turn. He's not actually been expanding all that much either. He was trying to get some radar up to expand more safely, but the thing is he's in the north spot. He's got a lot of metal extractors just right here. If he, like I said, sets up in the center here, Sets up a staging point, and then keeps that as defense. He can take all of these metal spots on the north side of the map. All he has to worry about is units coming in from the east side of the map. And, of course, on the south side, but with the staging point here, he wouldn't have to worry about that at all. Most players do that, that start in the north. They will typically build up the center of the map, and then use that to protect everything else. Whereas players to the south have a tendency to sweep up to the east, as we can see Norm is doing, or sweep up from the southwest. But... Steel Blue doesn't seem interested in doing that. And it appears to be to his detriment, unfortunately. So, on the other hand, we do have... Well, actually not on the other hand. There's nothing really changed for Norm right now. He's going for bandits, and they've been working out nicely for him. A couple outlaws as well coming in. They will probably not be able to get into the fight before it's over. Now, the thugs are retreating, trying to reform a shield ball. And once they do, it'll be much harder to get through these outlaws could do something to them, however, given that they do not deal a whole lot of damage anymore, it's gonna help, but it's not gonna be that deciding. The bandits, however, still should retreat. They still should go down to the outlaw cover. And one of them actually going down. The thug ball large enough that outlaw as well for Steel Blue will finish these bandits off. They pretty much can't retreat anymore. Those that can, however, are able to do so, get out of there safely. But now Steel Blue is actually managing to pull us around. Norm has a spider factory coming in in the southwest side of the map. He's otherwise not using a whole lot of his economy. He's actually... Both players are actually floating at this point, I should point out. And the shield blood factory, not an infinite build. No caretakers or anything. Roach, however, doing a great job for Steel Blue, destroying all of Norm's bandits, and Steel Blue will take everything out from here. He's doing a much better job managing his economy. It's been smaller this entire game, but it's also been just used more. Steel Blue basically has... He has these bandits, and he can easily get far more, but he's not doing so. He's focused on building this up here, and he even then should be having a caretaker or two just to support that. He has 32 metal income. That's more than enough to support two factories, one of which with a caretaker. Actually, no, it's exactly enough to support that. That's still what he should be doing, though, and he is not doing that. No caretakers anywhere. This is rather embarrassing. Doesn't matter, though. It's still... A lot of raiding going on. He is still taking advantage of that the Steel Blue is focusing everything to the center of the map. But that shield ball is getting scary, and I'm not sure how he's planning on making use of the Spider Factor for this. Possibly using Venoms just to pierce through the shields. The MP attack will get through that and will be able to tear apart the units from below. But then again, he has to actually get the Venoms close enough. Alternatively, he could be going for a Crab, but at this point, he has the money for it. Still not sure I'd recommend it. Bandits coming in trying to raid, but the Laser Turret's dealing with them without too much issue total waste of units there, which wouldn't be so bad if there was a caretaker here. I'm going to be harping on that because that is very important. One of the most important things to learn about Zero K is the assist build is your friend, by far. And he's not taking full advantage of that, but he is definitely building up to the north. Actually, building quite a bit of radar to the northeast, too. We see from Norm's point of view, actually, he does have radar coverage of... Well... From the looks of it, he has radar coverage of Steel Blue's entire base. He's fully aware of what's going on in there. He only has this plane here as a radar shadow. But even with that knowledge, it's not helping him too much. The Outlaws, however, are pushing into a nice position, slowing down the Thugs, but not nearly enough. They are surrounded, and they will be destroyed. The Thugs slow down, but not completely destroyed, not inconvenienced enough to really be vulnerable. More bandits coming up, but once again, not produced quickly enough. And the Spider Factory left idle. Why is it not producing anything? Okay, there we go. It was meant to be producing Venoms as I expected. I don't... I can't say I really agree with having the Spider Factory, though. I would have... Hmm. 
Okay, I can't say I totally disagree with it either, given that Gauss and Flame don't pierce shields anymore. But, really, I would just say push hard in the shield bot factory and work from there. Granted, there aren't a whole lot of other options. Stiletto Bomber might do the trick too, but that involves investing into air, which would give the Stiletto Bomber, and given the fact that Steel Blue has very few defenses, it actually wouldn't be a bad idea to invest in air anyway. He could do Neopalm raids along the side here, and then Stiletto could just take care of all these units here, stun him out. The Venom, however, trying to do exactly that, and it looks like it's doing something. But the Roach, that's what we really needed. A Roach coming in, tearing apart the rest of the thugs while they were distracted. That was the way to go. Nicely done from Norm. Though a little bit late, that could have happened five minutes earlier. But still something, and Cloakybot Factory coming to the north. That will help. That was probably a more sensible choice than the Spider Factory. The Venoms are coming in, but it looks like the Venom weapon does not, in fact, pierce shields. It does, however, still deal the splash damage. You can see the impact creator right on the edge of the shield. It does not pierce shields. It does, however, have some splash damage, which causes EMP to get through. So, it helps, but it's not perfect. That being said, it helped enough with the Roaches. The Roach, however, starred the show there. Nicely done by Norm. Steel Blue, however, really just evening it out. At this point, Steel Blue, despite his weaker economy, is still doing better. I mean, he does have Recluses coming in for artillery. Not a bad idea. Shieldbot does not have any direct fire artillery, though, once again, not a whole lot. I mean, Shieldbot does have EMP artillery, which does help a lot, but Steel Blue only going for laser turrets. Thugs could take care of those, no problem, or warriors from here. Zeus's are coming up from the Glokibot factory. That will also help, but warriors can take care of laser turrets, no problem. Like two or three warriors just tear apart laser turrets. Venom's coming in, and we'll be taking a lot of damage from the laser turrets. One over here, not stunning the right thing, and we'll be going down to the laser turrets fairly quickly. The bandit nicely distracting it long enough, though, and the Venom able to stop the laser turret from doing anything. Nice, nicely done there from Norm, but that rating working out, actually. See, Norm has been setting up this entire time and doing a quite good job with that setup. But still, Steel Blue had a huge chance there, and he took a fairly good advantage of it. But at this point, he's pretty much just going entirely for convicts, and that's that's a little bit too late now. He's defending completely, and once again, that's stopping him. In this entire game, Steel Blue has been stopped by the fact that he's only been defending. And it looks like Norm was going for a bit, a bit of an attacking commander. Definitely a, well, slowing down the enemy forces commander. Would have been quite effective against the thugs, actually, if it hit them. But not really useful now. A bunch of convicts are all that Steel Blue has. And nothing else. I'm a bit surprised he isn't getting bandits of his own, or... I guess he can't really easily factory switch at this point. Actually, come to think of it, he could. He has so much metal in the bank, and he has so many convicts, he could build a factory in about five seconds. At this point, he, he quite literally could build a factory. He's about a dozen constructors now. All of them moving on one factory would build it in five seconds. And then you just assist build that. Wouldn't help too much, but still. The point is, factory would be built quickly enough. Stinger, however, is being built instead. That will not help the recklesses. This is what I was talking about, artillery, and... Now Flea's coming in. Well, at this point, Norm is pretty much just being cheeky, sending in anything he can, because he has so much more money than Steel Blue. Steel Blue trying to reclaim to get... to make up the difference, which isn't working out too well, since really at this point it's just too late. Commander going down, and from here it'll just be all these forces. At this point, this Stinger, once that goes down, I mean, it doesn't even happen to necessarily go down, but it's being protected rather nicely by the convicts, but even then, it's... These convicts taking enough damage from the shields from the recluse, or maybe not enough. I mean, that stinger is pretty long-ranged. But once again, it's entirely just convicts or defense. At this point, Steel Blue is just delaying the inevitable. He isn't sending out any forces around the side to take out these factories, take out the metal extractors. He, I mean, like I said, he is really on the back foot so heavily that I'm not sure there's a way back. But building up a bunch of convicts to try to build defenses is not going to work. Bearing in mind, Zero-K is infinite economy. You can't starve out your opponent's economy. You can only destroy it directly. So at this point, just a matter of Steel Blue throwing in the towel, and once that happens, then... I don't know. Then that should be game. I don't really see any way out of this for Steel Blue. At least none he's willing to take. And these fleas coming in here, that's pretty much game at this point. 
And these hammers taken out the Shieldbot Factory. Not really much more to say for Norm at this point. It's just... Well, that Roach might help. Granted, Steel Blue sending in a Roach there could be of some help, but not really. No, there we go. Steel Blue throws in the towel, and that is the game. So I hope you enjoyed that, and I'll have another one shortly, so stay tuned.